So, again, our well, apologies, sorry for the late start, the other way start. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things in his right hand and his holy arm. for all of us. So let us all stand and sing to the glory of God or open in Him. Come let us all unite and sing.
single note and singing and making melody to the Lord will fill our hearts. It is to Him and about Him that we sing. We sing because we know that gives your people that unique closeness with you. And as we gather here this afternoon, we pray, O oh God, for a special blessing upon all of us. We come there, God, knowing that we can only depend on you to take us through. And this evening, this afternoon, in this act of praising and worshiping you, we, O oh God, pray that all will go up to you as a great thanksgiving and that the Savior will send your blessings down to us. Protect us, O oh God, may no harm, danger, seen or unseen, come upon us as we celebrate this afternoon. We bring before you all the choirs, O oh God, of the denominations in Charlottesville. And we know that as we come together and sing, there will be great fellowship. And that great fellowship, O oh God, we know once it is sweet here on earth, we are going to look forward to that great rapture in heaven. So bless us and direct to what we do, because we offer all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It is my duty this afternoon just to introduce to you the one who would lead us through in our proceeding. A very powerful lady filled with the spirit of the Almighty. I want to let you know that she is one of our ministers in the Tobago circuit. She's a local presbyter and she is really full of fire. So with no further ado, I present to you Reverend Marston Alicia Melville, who will take us through this afternoon's proceedings. A pleasant good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We welcome you to this, our festival of songs. And this is in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of this building, the Charlottesville Methodist Church. We also welcome you who are viewing us via live stream. It is Psalm 132 that says how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the bed on the bed of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life evermore. The preface in the Methodist hymn book 1933 version says that Methodism was born in song. Methodists are well-known and enthusiastic singers in choirs and congregations. Singing is still a very important, a very important means of learning about and sharing and celebrating our faith. John and Charles Wesley first realized 
situation in Saul. And as we continue, we now invite the praise and worship team from the Charlottesville Methodist Church to lead us in a time of praise in worship. As they come, we also remind you at home, this is the time to take off your shoes and to clear space in your living room as we will worship God in song and dance in clapping of our hands and playing a musical instrument. Amen?
you thanks, Almighty God, for your great God. Amen. You are worthy of all our praise. There is no other God like you. And we are privileged to be in your presence as believers in Christ to praise and to magnify your name. Amen. You know, history is very important. History is important because it lays the foundation on which we build. It reminds us um, of where we have come from. And even as we go into the future, it is always important to reflect on what was done before. 100 years ago, I would imagine that as well as the hymns that we sung, we sang a lot of ancient hymns or canticles, as they were called, or as they are called. And so this evening, even as we, we sing praise, songs of praise and worship, and even as we sing hymns, we also want to reflect and share and be reminded of those songs or, that were sung by our grandparents and the great-grandparents, and we occasionally sing at Easter and at Christmas. And so, for some of us growing up, we just will ramble it all. But if we spend some time in meditation and reflection, we will recognize that there were some high notes of praise and psalms singing and being sung unto Almighty God. And so this evening, we are blessed to be led by the Charlottesville Methodist Choir as we sing the Venite and the Tedium Lord Amos.
choir and we invite them to continue as they sing for us the Lord's Prayer, one of the versions of the Lord's Prayer.
So may God bless you and the other ministers who come with me, they have the enjoyment that we have to share. God bless you. Happy celebration. Amen.
some faithful leaders and ministers before my time. Some of them have gone on before us, like the Moors and the Ashbees, anti Myrtle and all the others who have gone on before, and who I believe are with the saints in glory. All those ministers who served here in Bethel, and those who are currently serving, we give God thanks to them and pray that they will continue to do his will. All those leaders and preachers, the Perrys, the Carringtons, the Marcells, Mother Ridge, Erna, and the others, Sims Murray, in my time, at just a call, was ready and willing to move. I recall when we were doing the extension to the church, there was a strong man named Old Thomas, whom it was said was a miserable man, but we became close friends. He was a hard worker. Also, I recall all the guys on the block whom I spent a lot of time chatting with, with them and got some of them to attend church. Mention must be made of the great singing choir of Bethel Methodist Church, which included singers like Sister Erna, Cynthia, Suzanne, Nato, Modella, Eva, Maureen, Ivy, Sister Christmas, and Brother Marcel, being led by one of the better musicians across the district. I speak of none other than Brother Kieran Moore, product of another great musician, Brother Anthony Moore. The young people, Kafi, Kadia, Dahlia, Dalton, Lawrence, and the others, names I can't recall at this time. Bethel, congratulations on reaching this milestone of 100 years of service, ministry, and mission to this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I pray that Bethel will continue to be a beacon in this nation and in the village of Charlottesville, and that it will continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who will come to this place. Congratulations, Bethel, on reaching this milestone of 100 years. And may God continue to bless you abundantly. and praise for his servants who would have faithfully served us in this part of the vineyard. We want to remind persons that it is 100 years anniversary in this building, but the witness of the Methodist Church in Tobago is over 200 years. Amen? At this time, we go into the excited part, the Methodist hymns from other denominations, and we will begin with the Pentecostal Church, and I invite Brother Moore to introduce uh, their presentation. So the Pentecostal Church is doing for us 
this afternoon, count your blessings. And some of the information is up. Before I go there, as they come in, I would want to let you know that this background work was done by the name that was mentioned earlier by Reverend Harry, Karen Moore. He's not with us, and he's, he would have liked to be with us, but he's actually otherwise engaged with his school in Barbados. So he would have put together the analysis for us. And while we are asking the members to come forward, I would just give you some information here. Are they, they, I know they were outside just a minute. Inside? Yes, come right, come along, come along. Right. Now the Pentecostal have to move back quickly to another function. So we let them sing and then I'll tell you about count your blessings afterwards. Mm. Good afternoon, everyone. So, as Brother Moore said, we are representing Pentecostal, Shall the Lighthouse Tabernacle, and this evening we're going to sing that song, Count Your Blessings. When upon life bellows you are tempestors, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Call on many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God When you look at others with their land and gold, think that Christ had promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God
on to, as I said, Brother Karen, who was, of course, choir master and organist here. He, a proud son of the soil, we are happy to let you know that he teaches in a secondary school and he holds a bachelor's and a master's in music education. And he has put this together for us. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, was written by Johnson Oatman, Jr. of Lumberton, New Steps to ascend a sixth. So we're hearing some music here, and I hope I'm not getting too much into it. Lyrically, paints the text with the strength for the word arise. Before descending to the supertonic, which gives the singer a sense of work, work that is not quite finished when singing and putting your armor on. However, the tune in our 1938 Methodist hymnal book is by E.W. Nilo, 1867 to 1934. We now hand it over to the Adventist Choir. I see Mr. Donnett Allen is the conductor. What? Look at that. Wonderful man.
in celebration of the amazing love he had come to know. He wrote, And can it be that I shall gain? And where shall my wandering soul begin? The text of the hymn is fairly straightforward. Wesley opens with an exclamation, And can it be that I shall gain an interest in my Savior's blood? Finally, he explores the results of Christ's amazing and merciful work. There is no condemnation for those men alive in Christ and clothed in his righteousness. Rather, there is bold access to the throne as we have the right to claim the eschatological crown. Today, this hymn, and can it be that I shall gain, is commonly referred to as the Methodist Anthem. And so we now invite the Anglican, which I understand is a joint uh, congregation, to minister to us or Methodist Anthem.
Yes, and as we sing, we, of course, we connect with our God. So we move on, and we bring on the Baptist. Yes, the, there's a, a people, B, D, B, 2554. I think it's blocking someone who wants to be the B, B, 2554. It's a lady one, or it's a regular, you know. Went already? Yeah. Yes. So we have the Baptist doing for us. Oh, love divine, how sweet thou art. And Brother Carrington, ready to bring your part on. Another hymn composed by your great founder, Charles Wesley. In this hymn, like many others, that he had written conveys the love he had for our Lord and Savior and the love that Christ has for us in return, as highlighted in the first stanza where he writes, I thirst, I faint, I die to prove the greatness of redeeming love, the love of Christ to me. Like many of Charles Wesley's hymns, this hymn can be sung to many tunes with the metrical index 886B. This hymn is commonly sung today to the tune of hymn 282 in the Methodist hymn book, the MHB, those, that was the book we had before, the VIP, to the hymn that we know as Spirit of Wisdom, Turn Our Eyes. I would not want to sing any of those tunes because I know our conductor and our musician who serves all of the people has something special for us.
Amen. Thank you very much. We continue with the Bethel Choir and they will sing May God Your Choice. May God Your Choice was written, composed by our very own Pearl Moraine local preacher in the South Trinidad, from the South Trinidad circuit and arranged by Godfrey Taylor of the Jamaica district. This hymn is one of our modern hymns found in the VIP, having been written in 1989 and published in 2000. This hymn takes into consideration our own Caribbean context and Caribbean rhythms compared to the traditional hymns in our hymnal at the time. The text of this hymn was a reminder then and still is relevant today to choose God before anything else in a society that presents varying options. As the first verse states, in a world of freedom as such, opportunities there are much. And increasingly, it's become hard to decide when the wrong things seem to be right and confusion is our plight. There is only one rule by which we all should abide. This hymn is a reminder and confirmation of, to all of us that by choosing God first, all things will be well, as Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added on the table. Pearl Moraine also is sister to a former connectional president, Reverend George, Dr. Reverend Dr. George Moraine, who also is one of our songwriters. We now present to you the Bethel Choir. Oh. 
this version and this adaptation to her song. Thank you very much, Bethel Choir. As we continue, we all know that several of our hymns lend itself to or have different tunes. And so one of Sister Alfred's favorite we will sing, or we, the Bethel Choir will sing for us, and they are going to sing four different versions. Uh, Brother Moore told me that there are actually five versions to a charge to keep, but since there are only four verses, they will sing four. I asked him, so why not sing over one of the other verses? And they let us hear all five, but next time they will do that. So we will now listen to the hymn, A Charge to Keep I Have, and we will hear four of the versions. Yes, we 
we will invite Sister Abby Allen Moore, who will sing the 100th anniversary gospel so that she would have composed. Uh, so we will take those two.
100 years and counting our blessings. 100 years, a time for reflecting. 100 years, yes, counting our blessings. 100 years, a must for Thanksgiving. See if you can enjoy. Blessings, 100 years, a must for Thanksgiving. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. 100 years, a time to count our blessings. And even as we celebrate 100 years, some of us have not lived 100 years, but certainly God has been truly good to us. And we all have an opportunity this afternoon to give God thanks for the many blessings that he has blessed us with and for this congregation that would have journeyed for more than 100 years of faithfulness, in serving Almighty God. And so we invite Brother Franz Job to continue in this evening of thanksgiving and song as he ministers to us. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Whenever I think of church, I think of my own upbringing and I know for a fact that I wouldn't have been the child that I was and definitely wouldn't be the man that I am now if it wasn't for church and in particular this church that I was raised in. So my um, rendition this evening is not a Methodist hymn but is one of those like hymns slash folk songs that unite all the religious peoples of our community. I think it's a song that everybody knows. So feel free to join in. Now I'm grown to be a man It still lingers deep within my soul Lingers deep within my soul Talking about uh, this train is bound to glory This train Now I am a man I 
remember my granny song and the feeling that it gives still lingers deep within my soul lingers deep within my soul this train is bound to glory this train this train is bound to glory this train This train don't carry no unholy. Talking about this train. Oh yeah, this train. This train. This train. This train. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. I was in a moment there. I could have just <laughs> such soothing rhythm. Thank you very much, brother. At this time, we are going to go into uh, a different little section where the Bethel Choir is going to lead us in singing. Uh, some hymns, but they're going to sing them to not the tunes that we are familiar with. They're going to do some different tunes. So they're going to do three hymns for us. Oh, happy day in your hands and sing to the great Jehovah. And I'm looking forward to hearing these versions of these hymns this afternoon. So we just welcome them again as they lead us. And after the they sing these hymns, Reverend Janice, Jack Watson would lead us in a time of reflection. Amen? Okay. Okay, so they're doing tunes that we know, and then they're going to go into the tunes that we may not necessarily be familiar with. Thank you very much.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Bethel Choir again for those renditions, and we pray that we will continue to have more opportunities like this to sing praises unto Almighty God. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite our dear Reverend Janice Jack Watson to lead us in a time of reflection. Let me greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. It is good that we are here celebrating this milestone with the Bethel congregation as we celebrate this afternoon Interdenominational Choir Festival under the theme, Methodism was born in song. And as I sat there, I recall that if I was in another chapel, someone who is now deceased would say, it is a lovely way to spend an evening. And so we can say it is a lovely way to spend an evening. My task this afternoon is to give reflections as we think of this edifice the Bethel Chapel being here for a hundred years. And we can say that God is good. And all the time. And so let us pause to pray to this God. Loving God, even this afternoon, we again heard that the psalmist declare, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And we bless your name for this opportunity where the saints on earth can praise you. And where we are reminded that hymns and songs and sacred songs that we sing here on earth is only a reminder that in heaven there would be music forevermore, perfect music, and it is the sound of heaven. And so God, even as we reflect briefly this afternoon, we pray that our hearts will continue to overflow with your goodness, so that as we go forth, we will go forth praising you with every breath that we take. As we meditate this afternoon on this scripture, we pray that it will bear much fruit in our lives. For we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As Sister Abby sang this afternoon, my mind went back and raced back to being in this chapel when I was a child. When we will come... And we will at times in our, the songs that we would sing when we had youth week and then it became youth month and we had gospel ipso and everybody knew that two per, uh, congregations to reckon with were Mason Hall and Charlotteville. And so it brought back fond memories of the times that we lift off the roof and then put it on back because of the sweet music. It reminded me and continues to remind me of one of Shakespeare's favorite quotes. William Shakespeare had this to say, if music is the food of life, of love, play on. This afternoon, I want to say, if music is the food of love, sing on. It is the epistle reading, Ephesians chapter 5, 18b to 20, that says, Be filled with the Spirit. As you sing 
psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to one another, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and in everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, as we have heard and continue to hear the beautiful music that goes up to the Almighty as we think of Methodism born in song, we could go back to talk about what exactly is music. Music, one definition says, an art of song in time that expresses ideas and emotions in significant forms through items of rhythm, melody, harmony, and color to the song by one or more voices, instruments, and both. This afternoon, we continue to hear this. And when we think of music, when we think of rhythm, some categorize it in two forms, sacred and secular. But as we think of sacred and secular in music, it, the two brings about various emotions. And we are reminded that it is God who created music. And so the God who has created us created music. I'm sure you remember that it is the late Winston Bailey known as the mighty shadow who accredits God in one of his songs who created music. He said this and I penned the words, music sweet. The one who invented music got to be really terrific. Got to be the one who created the sun, the trees, the rivers and seas. Music fills the world with happiness, plenty sweetness, and togetherness. Music has no friends, no enemies. Sacred or secular, music does something to our mind. It reminds me as I reflect on a hundred years of this chapel, and as I reflect on music and Methodism in song, some may say that as a child, I am a true Methodist. A Christian, yes, but a true Methodist. Some may even say, if you caught me, you will see Methodist. Because I remembered when I was a child and my parents would have sent my brother and my sister to learn piano. I said, don't send me. And I say, all right, we're going to let the tutor come in. And I started to cry. And I said, no, I don't want to learn piano. I don't want to. Because something about song, something about the, the voice touches my soul. So when I sat there this afternoon, the music from every area touched my soul. When they sang, Oh Happy Day, to that popular tune, it brought me back to reflect upon when I was in Beach and Bensington Circuit in Jamaica as a student. And the superintendent there was a musician as well. And she started to sing the alternative tune that you would have heard them sing, Oh Happy Day. And she would sing it to the choir. And then all of a sudden, they started to sing it to other choirs. And then all of a sudden, it became Jamaica a rhythm when they sang, Oh Happy Days. Oh, music brings us back to so many memories. It brings us back to the memory of, of our founding fathers, John and Charles Wesley, 
that reminds you and me that music comes from within. That because they had a relationship with God, they were filled with the Spirit. And as they were filled with the Spirit, the gift of God was endowed upon Charles Wesley. And he made beautiful music. All the world could attribute to this. The, son, the, the, the Ephesians was right when he said, be filled with the Spirit and be filled in total praise as you sing songs of psalms. And we would have heard the canticle and we would have heard the tedium laudimus and we would have heard... And we know songs of psalms when we hear the song. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Praise God. And then we hear of hymns of Charles because the, 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 the scripture says make spiritual music in psalms and hymns. And one of the hymns of my reflection that I love is for, oh, for a heart. To praise my God, hallelujah. A heart from sin set free. A copy, Lord, of time. And the, the, the Ephesians were reminded that they must sing spiritual songs. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell Spiritual songs that reminds us of liberation, that reminds us as a Caribbean people of physical liberation, but the song reminds us of, of a greater liberation, the liberation from Jesus Christ and his blood. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Methodism was born is in song. And when we sing the songs, we must sing it from the soul. It must show that we belong to this God, the one who gives us music, the one who created us to sing to him. Amen. Yes, as we reflect Upon the goodness of God, Bethel. A hundred years in this chapel. We can, just like James 5 and verse 13b says, Are anyone cheerful? They must sing songs. If we want to cheer up with soul, this train, our train, is bound for glory. That is where we want to go. And the songs of heaven, the songs of Zion, we will be able to sing. So as we go out in reflection of who God is, we must declare that we must give God thanks for his goodness towards us. God has privileged us to experience himself. And when we come to him from one age to the next age to the next age, we will sing of the glory of God. As we reflect upon this God, the God who is faithful, it is one of the songwriter Green who reminds us of the steadfast love and the faithfulness of God that says, he's been faithful. Faithful to me, Bethel. Looking back, his loving mercies I see. Though in my heart I have questioned and even failed to believe, yet he's been faithful. Faithful to me. 
This building didn't have to be here. This chapel didn't have to be here. And as we reflect and continue to reflect a hundred years until Christ come, it is my prayer that this chapel will sing praises unto God. Yes, I can say in reflection, if these walls could sing, they will echo the joyful hearts of those who have gone before, the matriarchs and patriarchs in Charlottesville who came together and they brought brick and mortar. They would have bought galvanizer, or whatever shingle or what the, the chapel was made from. And they would have come together with songs because they got an opportunity to build a chapel like this, to come in and to praise God. If these walls could sing, they will echo the melodies of our founding fathers who sang the canticles, who were able to sing from the sun keys and they lift the roof. They didn't come only on a Sunday, but whenever they're willing to open the chapel, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the community will hear the crescendo of the people who love God and worship him if these walls could sing. Then they will also hear of the frequent nights, not just day, of the frequent nights when the people of God gathered to worship God in song. Yes, Methodism was born in song, not just to sing songs. I can recall that they just had what was called jazz. And when they did the statistics, it was interesting for me to hear that people went to many of the events. But when it was time for the gospel session, the numbers were few. Oh, how we like to be entertained. But God wants us to praise him. So as we declare our rich heritage of Methodism was born in song, we must consecrate our lives to God. And he will fill us with the spirit. And when we are cheerful, we will sing songs. When we are dung, we will sing songs. Because we not just sing sing songs, but we sing of the Savior who is in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is my prayer this afternoon that as we would have echoed these songs in this chapel as we celebrate a hundred years, that the Holy Spirit will reignite this community, that the Holy Spirit will take over this community, and that the songs that we hear consistently would be sung of praise so that it will go through every home it will go through every lane it will go through every street because we declare that God is good remember they say we are in modern times but yet God's words is true when your land and your house and everything that you have increase. Do not forget the Lord. Let us sing to the God and let us declare that Charlotteville and Bethel is the house of bread. It is the place where we will sing and sing forevermore. That the chapel, that the benches and the pews will not sing for us, but that we will sing the songs of old. That we will sing the songs of those those who would have passed on the battle that Jesus is Lord. Let us sing because Methodism was born in song. Let us sing to the honor and glory of God so God through us will be able to transform this community even more 
and let the song be one song from every denomination. Together, may we unite in song as we go out to serve him. Amen. Amen. The songwriter says, may those who come behind us find us faithful. May the footprints that we leave lead others to believe that this God that we serve indeed is worthy to be praised in essence. Amen. Amen. Faithful persons would have built this sanctuary and we want to continue the work that they would have begun. So we give God thanks and praise for his word and for his servant and we continue to sing the praises of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. At this time we go into the offertory hymn. We sing the church is one foundation. Hymn number 407 in the VIP, and we would be led by the Bethel Choir. The, off the offertory that will be taken this afternoon will be dispersed to the different uh, denominations present. So that, oh sorry, Brother, brother Moore, come and explain. <laughs> come, Brother Okay. Okay. So the, the offertory would be used to buy to purchase musical instruments for the different denominations present. All right? So that should encourage us to give cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver.
sing over the first verse. invite you to stand as we bless God for the offering that has been received and we go to God in prayer. Mighty God you are establishing that the church's one foundation is in Jesus Christ our Lord. The one whose blood was shed so that all of us can come to that saving grace. And so, mighty God, we thank you for an opportunity as we celebrated the 100th year in this building there, God, among our plans there, God. We saw it fit to have an evening of celebrating songs there, God. We sang unto you the songs of Zion, the songs, oh God, that lifted emotions and lifted our hearts there, God, and made us joyous. We have received this offering, and we, dear God, is determined that we will share it among all who have come to share and to bless us with their renditions. And so we pray, dear God, that you would bless it. Father God, that as the instruments are purchased, dear God, it will continue to bring harmony and melody in the houses of praise, dear God, when the various denominations gather. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify your holy name. We say, have thine own way, Lord. And let your will be done in our lives and in your work and in your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our time together is drawing near to an end. And at this time, we invite the congregational steward, one of the congregational steward on duty, to do the vote of thanks. And I think there is also some special distribution of tokens. We want to say a special good, af good evening, good afternoon to our Anglican minister who is with us. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Reverend Mark. Reverend Mark and all the other uh, ministers that are present, a special good afternoon to you. So we invite the congregational steward on duty to come at this time and to bring the, the vote of thanks as well as the distribution of tokens. And then uh, we would invite our superintendent minister, Reverend Adolph Davis, who will come after to do closing remarks, and we we'll sing our closing hymn and end. All right? So it's Reverend Mark and his family. Dennis. Reverend, um, not Reverend, Brother Moore and Sister Frith, who is always willing. She's of the Pembroke Anglican, but she's always willing to assist us. So we are indeed thankful to have you sharing with us. We also thank our decorators, all the participants, and the congregation. We are indeed, because... If you were not here, we would not have had a successful evening. So thank you to all who have come out 
to support us this evening. God is indeed good. And all the time, he has blessed us with good weather. Thank God. And as you leave towards your home, may our Father grant you protection and care, safe travel, until we meet again in another anniversary. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. We have a few tokens here, and as I call, some representatives could come forward to accept our token of appreciation. First, we go with the Adventist. Mr. Allen, come forward. You're there watching. Come forward, stand up. A representative from the Anglican Church, please come forward. Anglican. Yes, on behalf of the church, to you, dear Lisa, and the rest of the gathering who came to make sure that the Anglican voices were heard, we thank you very much and we say receive with our love. Any members from the Pentecostal? I know some have left. Is there anybody around Pentecostal? Or someone that can accept it on their behalf, take it to them? No one? We'll give them up. Well, we we'll go to the Baptist religion. Who is going to receive it? Receive with love from the Bethel Methodist Church. Thank you so much for your rendition. And thank you to Pastor John for allowing, for preparing you all and allowing you to be a part of the celebration. Yes, yes. Let's give another hearty round of applause for all the choirs present here this afternoon. We have some outstanding members, some have passed. Oh, we have Brother Linsa Lalin, who served here as an organist for several years, a local preacher, a society steward, and different things. Friends, come and receive it on behalf of your grandfather. It's a good thing that you are wrong, Franz, to receive this and that it would serve as excellent memory you know i recall the days as a child the organ was on that corner and we were told don't touch that those keys because we're going to wrong tune it but we thank god for his service his dedicated service and we ask that you all receive this with love We have Brother Kevin Moore. He's not here in person. I know he might be viewing at this time. We have a lot of representatives for Kevin. We have Susan. We have Natalie. We have Dakari. Yes. This is for Brother Kevin in his absence, but whose spirit we are sure is here with us as he views. So Dakari conveyed with the love that we sent it, and we thank him very much for his service. Blessings. Another member of the Moor, Rona Moor Okululu, Susanna Onato, on behalf of your sister. She resides in the U.S. Yes, we are remembering Sister Rona for leading the choir in her time when she was around and her name has come up that we do this so convey our love and appreciation for the time 
that she served here at Charlottesville, Bethel. We have also Sister Heather Marcel. Um, we have Brother Hickson and Sister Stefna. Sister Stefna is coming. <laughs> Heather is um, Sister Stefna's daughter, but she resides in Trinidad. She contributed here as also an organist for a short time. Please convey to Sister Heather with our love. Thank you, Sister Stefna. We have our very own brother, Aunt Fanny Moore, who is always here. Come forward, please, Mr. Moore. Yes, this is the Lord's doing and marvelous in our eyes. This is An Brother Anthony's doing. Even if we coordinated, he came with the ideas. And we give God thanks and continue to pray God's blessing on you as you inspire God's people. Receive with love. We have one of our friends, friends of the Bethel Methodist Church here at Charlottesville that we can call on any time. Brother John Carrington, I know you take him by surprise. <laughs> yes, last weekend, Carringtons were celebrating. He said Carrington to Carrington. All right, Brother John, we, the church do show their thanks and appreciation. I know you come to funerals, and if there's no organist, we see you there. And they have spoken of it very deeply and decided that you should be one of the recipients of the awards this afternoon. Thank you for serving. Yes, we have another friend to the Methodist Church here, Brother Andre Moore. Could you come forward? We can call on him. Surprises are very good. Brother Andre, just receive on behalf of the church, acknowledging, you know, those times when you would come and you would join with the instruments and make sure there is harmony, whether it's funeral, harvest, cantata, whatever it is, when they call on you, you are here. Thank you very much. Yes. We also have one of our own, Brother Franz Joe. Please come forward. Franz has earlier shared of his upbringing in this church. He was privileged to be in the care of his grandparents in his younger days. And he returned as an adult, but he returned with a different discipline, a musical discipline, and the church appreciates you. I think I heard it was said too that whenever, like, if it's men Lord's Day, they would have you share the word. Right. So in, in the several ways, we are allowing you to experience this award. Be blessed. Brother Delta and Allen. Just a minute, Sister Abby. Huh? Okay. <laughs> History, history. And also <laughs> under the discipline of his aunt. I am his aunt. I discipline him. <laughs> Come, Brother Delton, on the drums there. Brother Delton, Allen. Appreciation allows for encouragement. And we pray that as you receive this and you place it on a shelf, a table, wherever you are, you remember that God is counting on you to give up your service to his church. Receive with love. Blessings. We also have two persons here who are, we can call on also at any time. 
I'm not seeing him, but his mom is here, Brother Clevon Evans. Cynthia, come and receive it. Brother Lyndon Johnson is next. I don't know who can take his um, token. Right. An award was given to, or rather, Brother Evans was named so that for his contribution to setting up the song system when it is needed. And we want to say thanks to him and convey Sister Cynthia with the love from the church. Thank you. Anybody can collect on behalf of Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson? That is a lolly. You own up the song system. Oh. Yeah, one of the best places to give your service is in the service of the Lord. And so, convey to him how our appreciation for his offering in enhancing the music in the church with the song system. Thank you. Well, I've saved the best for last. I wonder if it's the best. Sister Ivy Christmas. We both started in the choir from 19... 64, 63, 64, and we are still serving. But she's an all wrong that she goes to all the churches to sing in the choir. <laughs> Sister Ivy Christmas. Yes, as Sister Ivy is coming. If you go to Ebenezer, you see her there. If you go to a funeral in Delaford, you see her there. And it is on all of this contribution that you were named as the most all-wronged chorista. And we thank you. God bless you, Sister Ivy. Thank you. She said God bless her mother who encouraged her. Thank you. And was also a chorista there. I think that's it for the tokens. Finish? All right, just a reminder here. Tomorrow, the celebration continues and there will be a health and essential service down at the bandstand. Feel free to be there. will be there from about, I think, um, 10 to about 3, I guess. Go and test and see how your number's going. And also on Tuesday, there will be the Men on the Move. This is an interesting part. Please come out and support the men. There will be... Okay, let me go back on the health and essential. They'll be having a, a keep fit sort of thing before. Is that right, Susa Susa? 5.30, running along the beach and getting yourselves fit before you go down and do your testing of your blood pressure and whatever. So on Tuesday the 18th, it's men on the move. This will be an interesting day, as I said. The men will be doing their usual games and they will be cooking on spot. They'll be cooking fish broth, dashin soup, and yabba. So feel free and there'll be conversations, you know, spiritual conversations. So please come and support. And then on Thursday the 27th, which is the other week, there'll be a sports and family day. Please come out and support. And our dinner is on the 28th, the grand dinner, $200 per ticket. Please come out and support. This will be a grand occasion. Please come out, $200. Huh? All right, I'm reminded to tell you, don't leave, there'll be refreshments. So please enjoy the rest of the afternoon. You would and notice, get back safely. You would notice that the tokens were related to music and song. So there are some surprises yet to come as the celebrations continue. Brothers and sisters, we give God thanks for a wonderful evening. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. 
So I think we can put our hands together for all the choirs that participated this afternoon. You know, um, I think most of you know, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, okay, I, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it when I get to do it. Um, one of the things in scripture about hymns um, or songs was that they came out of people's experiences. They were part of the testimonies of people. So Deborah's song, Moses' song, etc. It's because of what they were experiencing and going through. And, and I think some of you who have taken time to do it, it's, it's a fascinating experience to learn the stories that inspired the hymns. You know, and you see, because the hymns connect us with what we believe about God. Uh, so they're not just musical notes put together to sound good. They're really supposed to be a part of our own faith experience. So interestingly enough, I think you would remember Psalm 37 that we have made, Psalm 137 that we have also made into a song. After the people of Israel were exiled in Babylon. Do you remember how that story unfolded? And they said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. For the wicked carried us away captivity, required from us a song. How can we sing the Lord's song in a... You see, that was significant because they were going through such a crisis of faith that they thought they could not sing. They could not testify of the goodness of God. And ironically, the Babylonians were mocking them and saying, where is your God? Sing, sing about this God that you believe in. And you may know it was that crisis of faith that they questioned, can we sing? Can we testify about God, his love, his power? And I believe in many respects we are in Babylon. I don't mean it like Rastaman Babylon system. But there is a real brokenness in our world. In Charlottesville, in Tobago, in Trinidad, in our world. Things are really a mess. And I don't know if you, like me, sometimes you wonder... If you're in the right place because the world seems so messed up and lost and broken you know you, 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 you listen to some of the things and you're trying to figure out what on earth is going on you know um, some of you know one of the real problems now that are affecting our world is boys are being told they could be girls and girls boys and you're wondering how could anybody in their right mind Say that kind of a thing. We see no more and more people celebrate vulgarity and lawlessness. You, you remember, I'm sure I wasn't in Charlottesville um, 40, 50 years ago, but you remember when 40, 50 years ago, people would find time and make time to go to church. It didn't matter what you do, you knew God was important. You would remember if a church service going on, whether Saturday or Sunday, people turn down the music, people, you know, make sure they try to be quiet because they respect the fact that people are gathering in worship. You remember those days? Just was it a couple of months ago we saw a church gathered and a man, some boys went in, in Trinidad with cutlass. You see, this, this, this seemed like we're in a different place or on a different planet. I'm sure as you walk through Charlottesville, those of you who are less young, you see whether it is men, especially young men, you see the brokenness, you see the level of lawlessness now. Bad word like, is like a first language. Young men would have song systems now and they turn up the song system and all kind of bad word coming out of the song system. You, you, I believe, brothers and sisters, that in all of this, brokenness so much that is wrong now is the time we need to sing the Lord's song 
Now is the time we need to truly sing of the goodness of God and praise God. Now is the time we really need to point people back to God. Now is the time we need to be able to so praise God that man, Jack, Harry, boy, girl, everywhere around Charlottesville and beyond. Again, their attention is drawn to the God who is the Redeemer, the Savior, and the Friend. And I think this is why things like these are important. Because, to be honest, I know we have different views about so many things in the church and who believe different things, but sometimes I wonder if we have missed the mark in realizing, even if you believe the Methodist, the Anglican, the Adventist, the Pentecostal, so wrong. But you mean we can't at least see a bigger goal that there are so many real lost souls. So when we think these are the church people, we're thinking maybe because of our doctrine they lost. But one thing we're certain about is that there are a whole lot of people out there who are lost. Are you with me? Shouldn't we? Isn't this the time we should be singing and glorifying God in a way that people who are going through their struggles, who are disenchanted, who are frustrated, remember this God that we adore, our faithful, unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power and neither knows measure nor end. Let's stand and sing that together. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, then we were, when we remember Zion, by the rivers of
Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace and may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 I think Brother Moore says there's a the benediction we will sing. Thank you. 